Hey everybody, welcome back to Tailwater Outfitters and just a continuation of this series we've been doing about how to kind of, you know, get started on certain types of fishing. We're going to talk about offshore. Now this is not my, my expertise. I do offshore fish, but usually I just go with people that really, really know what they're doing. I've written articles about it, I've, I've done more of it, but I wouldn't call myself an expert by any stretch of the imagination. But you say, hey look, I want to get into offshore fishing. I've done freshwater, I got into saltwater, but you're a little intimidated by going offshore. No need to be intimidated. It's just like any other kind of fishing. Fish are always fish are always going to be near the food. So if you find where their food source is, you're going to find them. Grouper, for instance, are going to be near structure and food. They're not going to be on a, let's say, a reef that has no food, even though most reefs are always going to have food on them. They're not going to be anywhere there's not food. So always look for food. Same, it's a, a, one of the best things you can have, and I don't have one here. One of the best things you can take with you if you're going to start fishing offshore is a pair of binoculars. Binoculars allow you to look around. You can look for diving birds, you can look for floating debris, you can look for all kinds of stuff that's going to allow you to find the prey that you're looking for. But once you get there, what do you do? Well, let's talk about some baits. And again, I always like to cut, say let's cover the water column. Bottom, middle, and top of the water column. The top of the water column, we're going to start right here, and I only got one, but these are fantastic. This is the Ocean Moor and Saltwater Dick. This is the Flying Popper. This is the Mullet um, Color. This is a giant popping bait. And if you get like um, stuff swimming up around the boat, pelagic species, you could have maybe have some amberjack, you have tuna, you could have whatever. This is something you can cast at them, put in front of them and pop and, and get them to go. Or shallow water grouper, believe it or not, especially once you go a little further north up into like, you know, uh, Hernando Citrus County, um, they'll get grouper in, in like April and November that's in, you know, 10, 12 feet of water. Take this guy and just bring it across those rock piles that's in that water, and those grouper will fire off the bottom and hammer one of these. It's a fantastic bait to have out there with you because even if you're bottom fishing, which around here most of the guys are going offshore, a lot of them are going, most of them are going to have to go grouper fishing. They're going to fish towards the bottom. But you always want something because you never know what's going to be swimming around you. So this is a great, great bait to have with you. We'll put that in the box. Now let's look in the middle of the water column. Um, there's a lot of guys that like to troll. There's a whole bunch of these. This is the Rapala X-Wrap. Uh, Yozuri makes them, Miralure makes them, Mans makes them, Mans Stretch. But this is a bait. This dives to 30 feet. Um, so you can troll for grouper. You can troll for all kinds of stuff. I mean, uh, if it's going to swim up and eat it, there's a good chance this will do it. Guys use them for uh, kingfish, all kinds of stuff. So get you a good offshore trolling bait, different, step, uh, you know, different depths of the water column. And again, this is just the starter pack. This is going to kind of let you get your foot, your feet wet, and then you go, hey, I really like this. You might go, I don't enjoy trolling, but man, I love bottom fishing. Or I don't really like bottom fishing, but I love trolling. We'll learn how to do that. Again, kingfish, that kind of thing. This is a, a, the, the gator lure's king spoon, um, a lot of flash in the water. And if you're catching those, those, uh, some of those fish out there, a lot of them have teeth, add one of these to it. That's a, that's a fish grip. That's going to help to, uh, you know... Keep your, keep your fingers from getting all cut up. Let's talk about the bottom of the water column. Now, there's a couple of ways you're going to do this. Now, if you're grouper fishing, most guys are going to be using natural baits, whether it be a live bait or cut bait, you know, frozen bait, frozen squid, things like that. So you need some stuff so you can make up some rigs, and that would be leader, weights, swivels, beads, and hooks. Now, you can go, we've got some videos about different uh, different rigs you can set up. Um, there's the fish finder rig. There's a knocker rig. Um, a lot of them have different names depending on where you go. But these right here, you can bottom fish for anything. So, um, and hook wise, this is the Gamakatsu. This is a, a circle hook. It's a 4X hook. So it's four times strong because these fish really, really pull hard and you don't want to be straightening out your hook. And I always like to have, like, this is a 6 aught and a 4 aught. So I'd like to have different sizes, not as much for the size of the fish I'm catching, more really for the size of the bait I'm using. Now, if I'm using cut bait, doesn't matter. I can cut the bait to match the hook. But let's say, for instance, I've only got four aught hooks, but my bait's this big. It's a little too big for a small hook. You get what I'm saying? So you want to have a couple of different sizes of hooks, you know, like I say, four, six, maybe even an eight aught hook with you. Um, that's good to go. And then some lead, and I got different sizes. I got six ounce, I got three ounce. Um, these are going to uh, you, you, I have different sizes because I don't know what the current's going to be doing. So I may have to ha really get a lot heavier to get that to stay on the bottom. Um, again, swivels, I like the ones that are the ball bearing swivel. Um, some guys like the barrel swivels, they are cheaper, uh, but they can kind of lock up on you. And then another thing, when you're out there and you're bottom fishing, you got a, uh, this is a flutter jig, speed jig they call it. Um, 
Williamson makes them. I think, I think Shimano makes some. Um, I personally have never fished with this, but I hear it's absolutely a blast to do. Um, and then basically a giant bucktail jig is something, again, we talked about this in our saltwater video, is you put me on an island somewhere and give me a rod and a reel on a bucktail, I can stay alive because I can catch fish with that thing. Um, you can fish it in freshwater, you can fish it in saltwater. This is a bigger one. This is a two ounce bucktail. Um, you can just let it go down to the bottom and, and work it off the bottom and boom, you're going to get hit. And then last but not least, let's talk about this. Now this would be a little bit different. If you are if you're always fish freshwater, you've probably never seen one of these. This is called a sabiki rig. And a sabiki rig is a way to catch bait. And what you do is on the back, there's little, there's detailed instructions. You tie one end, okay? You're gonna tie one end to your rod. Um, you can actually get a thing called a sabiki rod where, the, where this whole rig goes inside the rod. It, the, the, the line runs inside the, the, the blank of the rod. So you tie one end to your rod and then on the other end, you're gonna hook onto it a weight. We like the bass casting weights like this. Um, you can use these inshore, you can use them offshore, they make them in different sizes, they make them in different colors, they make them with light. Some guys tip them with little tiny pieces of shrimp. But it's got a string, when you pull this thing out from where it's tied to where your weight is, you got a string of six, eight, ten little hooks on it. And you can drop this down and catch the bait that's in the area where you're fishing that they're feeding on at that moment. So you can go down there and, and let's, say they're, let's say they're feeding on, I don't know, let, let's say you're fishing on a pier somewhere and they're scaled sardines. You can use these, catch some of those scales, so you can turn around and use them as bait. So I always recommend having a, a sabiki rig with you. This is a great way and it's a cheap way to get bait because these things are $379, $1.09 for the, for the sinkers. I mean, you're set. You're ready to go out and, and catch, you some, uh, catch you some bait, which then means you're going to catch you some fish. But if you want to get set up with this, this this rig, this whole deal right here is probably, I don't know, 115 bucks. You're you're in the door. You're out there fishing offshore, you know. We'll even get your boat set up for you. And if you don't have a boat, we'll do that for you too. We got, we got one out there you can take to the Bahamas or Cuba. You gotta be careful when you go to Cuba, but seriously, we'll get you set up. We're right here on US 19, just north of Curlew Road, north into the Dick Norris Buick GMC parking lot. Look for the boats. Come in and find us. Especially if Branson's here. Branson knows this offshore stuff a whole lot better than I do.